uh, to each one of you. The as I was thinking about the uh, what to share tonight, I heard the Lord say that um, prophetic words are portals to the supernatural realm. Uh, they came from the supernatural realm. So the prophetic words or pro words of prophecy come from the supernatural realm and they give you access to the supernatural realm. Uh, see, it's one thing, and, and you might even have a ministry or whatever you're doing on the earth. If you can do, you can do it in your own strength, but you need the grace of God and the power of God to do what God has intended for you and planned for you and has a purpose for you. And so you're going to have to receive his grace. And so we need that access to the supernatural realm. Mm -hmm. And so these prophetic words are very important. And, and you might say, well, uh, where does that show up in the scriptures? Well, uh, I've, I've talked to you before that there are a couple of different ways that you can receive the kingdom and operate in the kingdom. And one is to receive it as a little child. That's Matthew 18, verse 3. But then there's other times, like in Matthew 11, 12, that the kingdom is taken by violence or it's taken by force and it's, it's a fight, fight. And so sometimes you receive the kingdom as a little child. Sometimes you have to fight to receive the kingdom and the things of God. Uh, so the kingdom is the realm of the Holy Spirit. It's the realm of the supernatural. And so we have to uh, know how to receive it. And the prophetic words are very important. Uh, Paul wrote to Timothy in 1 Timothy 1.18. And he said, use the prophecies that have been spoken over you mm -hmm. to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Amen. Yeah, now that's pretty exciting. So yeah. sometimes we need to operate in the kingdom in a fight mode. And we're fighting with faith. And one of our weapons, one of our weapons are prophecies that have been spoken over oh, us. Amen. Now, amen. I just want to talk a moment about the prophecies that have been spoken over me and the, what the Lord has spoken over me. I have a record of those back to 1992. So every time the Lord speaks to me uh, personally or I receive a prophecy or a prophetic word, I've been writing those down. I have files of them. I have files by years. And so as I was thinking about today, I, I think this is a real important time for us to talk about uh, prophetic words. And there's uh, Lee. Uh, hey, hello, Lee. Lee. We're glad, and glad you've joined us. Uh, so I'm saying that it's real important to receive these prophetic words and to review them and go over them. And Paul wrote to Timothy and said, you use the prophecies to fight and to receive the kingdom. And so th mm -hmm. that's the time that we're in. That's the era we're in. You're going to need to know prophecies that have been spoken over you. So don't, don't just think, well, okay, somebody speaks a prophecy over me and we'll wait and see whether it comes to pass. No, it's mm -hmm. something you mm -hmm. use. It's a weapon to receive the mm -hmm. kingdom. Amen. You have to fight for the kingdom and, and you use the weapon. Now, let me give you an example of uh, uh, Brother Doug, whom you met Sunday night. Uh, his son, he, he had uh, one boy and one girl, and his boy's name was Jeremy. And one time when Jeremy was a little boy, uh, he received a prophetic word over him to Jeremy. And uh, it was that he would prophesy to many people mm -hmm. and, and impact people's lives. Okay, and then a few days later, Doug was out at the farm with his son and the tractor ran over his son and killed him. Okay, he's just a little boy. And Doug uh, could have just said, well, Lord, it, it didn't happen. The, prophet, the prophetic word that was spoken over him didn't happen. But what he did, he picked up his son in his arms, the dead body of his uh, little boy. And he said, but God, he has Hasn't not prophesied. prophesied. He has not prophesied yet. And so he's using the prophecy to fight for his life, for his son's life. Well, God raised him up. And Hallelujah. And now he's uh, in his uh, mid-40s mm -hmm. or, or, or uh, maybe late 40s, and he has two 
children he's married and he's gone all over the world and prophesied now but at that time he hadn't and, and you could easily say well that was a false prophet he he said he was mm -hmm. going to prophesy that jeremy was going to prophesy but he didn't prophesy and he died so you could have just said well that was a false prophet but that's not what you're to look at whether or not the oh, prophecy comes to pass you know isaiah said that uh, Jesus was going to die on the cross 700 years, 700 years, years before, before it happened. happened. And so for 700 years, people could say, well, Isaiah is a false prophet. But that's not, you don't look at whether the word comes to pass in a time period or not. You look at the fruit of the prophet. And so they're supposed to be producing fruit. And, and so we don't uh, measure everything by whether or not something comes to pass. And the words that were given to, to you, uh, I, I want to say two different kinds of prophetic words. Some have been given to everybody by Sherry. Sherry's given prophetic words. Sherry is a prophet. I don't know if you recognize it or not, but she's a prophet. She has a great gift of, of prophetic uh, words that she gives people. She sees things in the supernatural realm. She can look into your body and see what's going on, what what problems are there, whether your chemicals are out of balance. or She has this great gift, and I, I know her quite well. I've been married to her for 56 years, and so I know her life, and I have seen her progress and, and seen how those how she has developed to be a prophet, and it's not because she didn't uh, uh, wasn't instructed. Yes, she's been instructed oh, by yeah. prophets. Oh, yeah. She's uh, stood shoulder to shoulder with prophets and prophesied to people. And, and uh, we've gone all over the world and she's prophesied to people. I I am not a prophet, but I prophesied to people. I prophesied to everybody in a building uh, one by one. Uh, and, and so I can prophesy. You can prophesy. It says everyone can prophesy. And I, I have learned uh, uh, that gift I, i've received that gift and i prophesy uh but sherry is a prophet now that's a there's a difference anybody can prophesy but not everybody's not a prophet sherry's a prophet brother doug roberts is a prophet he came uh he gives us oversight sherry's learned a lot from brother yeah. doug yeah. brother doug has been in the ministry uh since 1975 maybe even a little bit earlier than that so he's traveled all over the world as a prophet and and i've seen and we've traveled with him many different nations and we've been uh, in with him in different congregations and we've seen him give prophetic words and he can just uh, it just rolls out by the spirit and uh he gave prophetic words uh to many of you um sunday night but he didn't know anything about you we never talked to him about people uh, and he didn't know anything about you but he picked uh, several of you out of the group and, and gave you a prophetic word. It wasn't because of anything natural, because we hadn't told him anything, anything. about anybody. And, and yet you saw how all of that rolled out. But but even if you didn't receive a word Sunday night, doesn't mean you haven't received a prophetic word, because if Sherry's prophesied over you, you have received a prophetic word. And so tonight we're going to be talking about how to understand these prophetic words and first of all, I want you to understand that you use them to fight. So a lot of people receive a prophetic word and, and they want to just put it on the shelf and not do anything about it and see whether or not it comes to pass. Well, that's the wrong thing to do because Paul said you use the prophecies to fight. Mm -hmm. and, and we know from Matthew that Jesus himself said the kingdom is taken by violent people by force. He's talking about faith, receiving the kingdom, what God has for you by faith. Now, you can do things in your natural, but you have to have God's grace to do what God has intended for you and planned for you. You have to have his grace. So we have to have access into the supernatural realm. And, and so yesterday he said portal. That is, it is a portal. So I want to think about these prophetic words for a moment. And it gives you, you've heard from the supernatural realm, and it gives you access into the supernatural realm, into the kingdom realm, into the realm mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to go through some verses about the word. John 1.1 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. 
Uh, now, another translation says it's the voice. The voice was with God. Uh, in the beginning was the voice, and the voice was with God, and the voice was God. Because it was not the written word. See, we didn't get all of the written word until 2,000 years ago. Yes. But this was in the beginning. In the beginning, there's always been the word. It's the living word. The living word has always existed. And the living word is God. And and, and he took on a man's uh, flesh and then he became Jesus. So we know him as Jesus, but he has always been in the, the word. word. He's always been the word. Okay. But it hasn't always been the written word. Uh, he's always been the living word. Hallelujah. And, and the words that you get from a prophet or a prophetic word, these are living words. And uh, the, the bare word without the spirit of God, see, kills. The bare word without the letter of the law kills, kills. but the spirit brings life. Woo, and, and so we're talking about the word with the spirit of God and the breath of God. And that's the way God created the universe by his word and by his breath and by the spirit of God. Okay, so um, I, I want you to think about um, just the word of God. And, and John 14, verse 23 says, if you love me, Jesus said this, if you love me, you will follow my word. You will keep my, my word. word. You're going to keep my word. That's the living word. So if you love Jesus, you're going to keep the living word. And so you've been given prophetic words, and those are living words. They're not the bare word without the spirit, but those were living words. Uh, they're consistent with the written word, but they're the, they're the spirit words, the spirit-filled words, the spirit-breathed words, the living word. So you've received prophetic words from either from Sherry or from Brother Doug or other people. Okay, so those, those are living words. And he said, then the Father, listen to me, the Father will love you. So if you take these living words, these prophetic words, if you take these living words, you keep them, and you operate in these living words, then the Father will love you, and we will come to you, the Father and the Son, Jesus, they're going to come to you. And where do they come to you? They come to you in the Word. They come to you and to fulfill the word. So the word, okay, so you've received a prophetic word. You've received a living word. Then, and, and you begin to act on it. You do something with it. The father will love you and the father and the son will come to you and perform the word. Hallelujah. So that's how they come to you. They come to you in the word. Amen. They, they don't come to you outside of the word. They come to you in the, in word, the word to perform the word. Hallelujah. Now, but I said, uh, and I heard this yesterday that the prophetic word is a portal to the supernatural realm. It comes from heaven. It comes from the supernatural mm -hmm. realm and it gives you access to the resources of the supernatural realm. Hallelujah. It gives you uh, the a re access to the anointing and to the grace of God. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus said in uh, John uh, 14, 6, I am the way. That's a portal. He's the way. He's the way to what? The Father. Ooh, uh, the, but the Father, we know from John 4, verse 24, that the Father is a spirit. God is a spirit. Yes. So Jesus is the way to the spiritual oh, realm. Wow. Hallelujah. He, he, he's the way to the spiritual realm Damn. where the Father is because the Father is a spirit. Okay. And then in John 10, 9, Jesus says, I'm the door. That, that's a portal. Woo, he's, glory. The portal. he's the way. He's the door. He's the portal, the mm -hmm. door to the supernatural realm. The, so the living Hallelujah. word, Hallelujah. the living yeah. word is the portal. Hallelujah. The prophetic Hallelujah. word is yeah. the portal into the supernatural realm. And, and, and the father and the son will come to you. If you believe these words and you act on these words, then the Father and the Son, they will come to you and, and perform the word. They come to you in the word. Okay, so now in John 3, 10, 3, 10, 3, it says that somebody opens the door. That's the doorkeeper. He's also the porter. 
and the mm -hmm. gatekeeper. And, the gatekeeper. and so you've got the doors, Jesus, but the Holy Spirit, Spirit is, is the one who opens, opens the, the door. door. And so if you just have the word without it in the natural mind, you, you don't have the door or the portal open to you. <laughs> but Doug opened the portal to you by the Spirit of God giving you a living word on Sunday, or Sherry has given you a living word, a prophetic word o over time. And so that has opened up the supernatural realm to you because it's a portal. Okay. Now, uh, let me just say this. I'll just interject this quickly. Okay? okay. That as we receive prophetic words, we cannot catch hold of them with our natural minds. Because the natural mind is an enemy to God. So we have to receive the words that are given to us prophetically by faith and through the spirit. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us, if you will. And I'll talk more about that in a few moments. So you can either reject the word. You can reject what Sherry has spoken to you over time. You can reject what Doug has spoken, or you can receive it. Now, if you mm -hmm. receive it, I'm going to tell you there's some benefits. But a lot of people, mm -hmm. they just put it on the shelf, yeah. or they forget about it. But see, I don't forget about the prophetic words that have been spoken to me, because that, see, those prophetic words and what the Lord himself has spoken to me over my lifetime, that is my identity. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. in the natural, mm -hmm. I was raised as a cowboy, yeah. a Texas cowboy. My great uh, grandfather was a rancher and a cowboy. My grandfather was a cowboy. My father was a cowboy, and I was raised to be a cowboy. That That's not my identity. My identity is in Christ, what Christ mm -hmm. has spoken to mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. over my lifetime. And I know, and some of those things were just burned into me because he spoke them uh, to me. That's my identity. That's who I am. And, and some of those came by prophetic words. And some of them, was, as I studied the word, they, they came alive to me. Or sometimes as I was fasting and praying, uh, the Lord would speak to me. And that is my identity. That's who I am. It's the, it's the word that has become alive to me. Okay. Now we're talking about these prophetic words. Now, Matthew uh, 10, 41 says, if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, prophet. you receive a prophet's reward. reward. Amen. Okay, so what is a prophet's reward? I'm going to tell you six things, uh, and there may be more, but I'm going to tell you these six things, and this is the sign of a prophet. A and a prophet, these are what prophets do. First of all, they know the plan of God. They know the will of God. And Okay, mm -hmm. so if you receive a prophet, as a prophet, in the name of a prophet. And so if you see Sherry and you say, well, Sherry is a prophet. When she speaks to me and she gives me a prophetic word, I know that it has come from the supernatural realm. It's come from heaven for me. So I'm receiving a prophet in the name of a prophet and, and I'm going to receive a reward. And the first reward is to know the plan of God and the will of God. And that's what a pro prophetic word is. It's going to show you the will of God, the plan of God. Okay, so I'm looking at six different signs of a prophet. Uh, the second is he gives you direction on what you're to do, direction. Uh, um, there was a widow uh, that came to Elisha and uh, said, uh, I'm in a lot of debt. And he said, well, what do you have in your house? And, he's, and she said, uh, I have a little oil. So he said, okay, go borrow a lot of empty vessels and, and bring them back home mm -hmm. and fill them up. And, and so the oil was multiplied. So that gave to her direction. Now, your prophetic words give you direction. If you say, no, Doug Roberts was a prophet, I was a, is a prophet, Sherry's a prophet, they give me prophetic words and our, they give me direction. So that's, that's the second benefit, okay? The third is it drives back evil. Hallelujah. It drives back evil. One time, uh, uh, a king of Israel uh, wanted to know if he was going to die. He was sick, and so he sent his uh, uh, some soldiers off to a, a soothsayer. And, and uh, uh, Elisha met him and said, 
and said, uh, is there no prophet in Israel? Uh, you, you go back and tell your king you're going to die. <laughs> well, he drove, he just drove back evil. He didn't let them go on their own way. He just drove them back. So it drives back. For the prophetic word drives back. And the prophet, the, the benefit, the sign of the prophet is that they drive out evil. Uh, sometimes if we have confusion in our life, the prophet will speak to it and say, well, that's, that's just confusion. You, you need to be focused over here in this direction. So it's bringing, uh, driving back evil. That's, a, that's the third sign of a prophet. Okay. So the prophets lay foundation in people's lives. That's number four. Right? That's number four. Number four. Foundation. Uh, Ephesians 2.20 says that we're being built up uh, with the apostles and prophets being laying the bank, building the foundation and it's all lining up with Jesus Christ the cornerstone. I mean, so yeah. a prophet is going to know about foundation and so if you receive a prophetic word it's going to lay foundation in your life. See if you don't have a good foundation uh, and the foundation cracks when you get too much weight on it it, it, it cracks and, and so the whole house comes falling down. Mm -hmm. You don't want your house uh, to come falling down. Now, another uh, benefit, a sign of the prophet. Number five. Is fruit. They bear fruit. Mm. They bear good fruit. They operate in love. They operate in the fruit of the they spirit. They bring peace. And, and so when you know direction and what to do, then you don't have to be struggling and, and going in all these different directions because you'll have focus and you'll have peace in what you're doing. And, and uh, that's uh, uh, Matthew 7. He, he said, you'll know the false prophets and the true prophets. You'll know them by their fruit. By their you, fruit. You don't, you don't know. He didn't say you'll know them by whether or not the word comes to pass immediately. No, it's, it's not that. It's whether they bear fruit. See, I have known Sherry for 58 years. We've been married for 56 years. I know her. I know the fruit that she produces. And I know her to be a true prophet because she produces good fruit. Okay. And I know Doug Roberts and I've known mm -hmm. him for years and years and he gives us spiritual oversight. I know him by his fruit. Yes. So I know him by his fruit. Now, there, there are times that people run from the prophetic word that they get and, and they just throw it down. I don't want it. I don't want to do that. I don't. God tell, tells them to do something by a prophet and they say, I don't want to do it. Well, it's not going to come to pass. That's right. So, so you don't look at whether or not the people are rebellious. It, they may be rebellious mm -hmm. and they may be evil that receive prophetic words, but the prophetic word brings redemption. I remember that a prophetic word will always be bring redemption. It may start out pretty hard, mm -hmm. but it'll always come around to redemption. And, and, and so the prophetic word, because our God is a redeeming God. Hallelujah. And that's pretty important. So there's going to be, uh, there's going to be some redemption. Now, the sixth sign of a prophet that I want to mention is they release potential. The Hallelujah. words that they release, release potential. Now, there mm. was a time, and I'm just giving you an example of this. Uh, uh, Elisha was in a uh, uh, city that was shut up, and there was an army that was besieging it. And, uh, he, and uh, he said, tomorrow, and then so they were starving. The people were just mm. starving in that city because it was shut, it, shut up and nothing coming in and nothing going out. And he said, tomorrow, grain is going to be abundant. <laughs> That's releasing potential. He mm -hmm. said, grain prices tomorrow. And he didn't say in a week or a year or three years. He said, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. that, that's a prophetic word. That, that prophetic word released potential. He said, tomorrow, grain prices are going to be abundant. Grain's going to be abundant and grain prices are going to be very low. Everybody can afford grain tomorrow. Hallelujah. We may not have anything to eat today, but tomorrow he's Hallelujah. releasing potential. So I've given you six signs, six signs of the prophetic. And if you can uh, believe that Sherry is a prophet and she gives you a prophetic word, then that was a prophetic word. You believe it was a, from a prophet and you receive it. Then, then you have the benefit of these six different things. You know God's plan. You, you can drive back evil with it. You can receive the kingdom of God with it. Hallelujah. You, you can uh, 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 have direction in your life. You can uh, 
have, have foundation. fruit, have foundation, have fruit in your life, you can release potential in your life. Because that's what Matthew 10, 41 is talking about here. If you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you receive the prophet's reward. And that's the benefits of being connected to prophets and, and, and hearing from prophets. Now, if you don't hear uh, from prophets and you just hear from people who, who don't have any insight into the supernatural realm and what God is doing, then you miss all of those things and, mm -hmm. and you lose all of those benefits. So if you can receive the prophetic words that Doug has spoken over your life or that Sherry has spoken over your life, I know she said, uh, she said uh, uh, many words and, and um, I, 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 I've gone past them because I believe now is the time we're establishing Sing the importance of these prophetic words. And uh, you may have heard them over time. Uh, and, and some of you may have just put them aside and said, well, we'll see whether or not they come to pass. But let me tell you, it's your responsibility. Now, what I did uh, um, yesterday was to have them transcribe the ones that Doug gave. And really what I encourage you to do in the days ahead, if uh, Sherry gives you a prophetic word or somebody gives you a prophetic word, you write it down. Be sure, put it in a journal, uh, have, have it so that you can go back to it over and over. See, I can mm -hmm. go back to the prophetic words and, and that's my identity and the, and the words that the Lord has spoken to me, over me. I, I Back to 1992, every year there have been things that have been spoken over me and I go back to them and review them from time to time because that's my identity. That's what I'm doing. That, that's where mm -hmm. I'm headed and that's, that's where I found out these things. See, otherwise, I would just think I was a cowboy, uh, and, and I'd be out there on the range uh, and get, saying, get up, little doggies, get up, little doggies. But, but I want you to know that I think there, these words that Doug gave Sunday night were so precious yes. and so important yes. to you that they'll change your life. They will open up the supernatural realm to you so that you can receive the resources from heaven. You can receive grace and peace and comfort. Uh, and all of the resources, everything that, that uh, God has to you. Not only these prophetic words, but the other prophetic words. And remember Paul said, you fight the fight. You fight the good fight with the pro prophecies that have been spoken over you. I mean, so I mean, now Sherry's going to talk. I, I get, these are basic principles I've laid out. Now Sherry's going right. to talk specifically about some of those words. Yes, I am. And I'm going to start out by saying, and the Lord told me this a long time ago, is that when I receive a prophetic word for myself, then God is pouring out his love. God is pouring out his love upon anyone that that prophetic word comes to. And we are precious to the Lord. And the Lord wants us to know his plan for our life and his will for our life. And, you know, and, I, and I've heard this many, many times, and, and that is, you know, well, we don't need prophecy anymore. You know, that's just, uh, uh, you know, that's just nonsense. That's, uh, you know, that's not real. And, and we don't even need it now. You know, we, we need to know what God desires for us. Now, if we have ears to hear, he can speak to us individually. And I'm sure he has, has done that with all of you that are listening uh, tonight. And because if you have ears to hear, you can hear from the spirit of the Lord. And that is, if the word of God is a more sure word of prophecy. Hallelujah. But then there are times when, when we need... Um, um, a boost. We need uh, something that's going to comfort us, exhort us, uh, build us up so that we can go another day so that we don't have to uh, leave, you know, leave this earth not knowing uh, what God wants of us. And so that the, the word of prophecy uh, is uh, one of those tools uh, that uh, helps each believer uh, to know those six things, those benefits, uh, but it also, we are to be thankful for every word of prophecy that, that comes to us. 
whether it comes from, I've had children prophesy over me. I had a little girl that was seven years old that we were ministering in this congregation. And at the end of the meeting, she comes up to me and she uh, tugs on my on my sleeve. And I looked down and there was this small girl, little girl. And she said, um, uh, Sister Sherry, she says, the Lord says that you're always going to be right where he is. Woo! Hallelujah. That was years ago. That was 20 years ago that that little girl who is now married and has a baby of her own, she prophesied over me. And I hang on to that, that I'm going to be where God is. Hallelujah. I believe that. I was thankful for that word. I received that word. I said, oh, thank you, Lord, for that word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 